Yeah, welcome to my V Brownback session about version control in V Realize Orchestrator. My name is Jörg Lieb. I'm based out of Germany and work for uh, VMware, part of the office of CTO. And today I want to explain you some mechanics and pitfalls when uh, using version control in VRO. So we will see how Orchestrator handles different versions of workflows, how you can get them under source control like a kit, and some yeah, typical caveats and pitfalls when you do uh, workflow development in a team. Now let's start with the mechanics. In VRO, we have a built-in version control that allows you to increase versions for the workflows that you develop. So when you edit a workflow in the general tab, you can um, in the VRO client, you can increase the version just by clicking on the version number. And that uh, also allows you to add some comment, what changes you made in the workflow. Um, be aware that the author that is stored in the um, ver version history there is the one that you use to log in with the VRO client. So despite the screenshot, usually you better use named accounts. So you get some better reproducibility um, in there. The version inspector that opens up when you click the show version history uh, button also allows you to do some diff between the different versions and you also can revert to an older version. Be aware, it's like with uh, snapshots of virtual machines, if you made some changes that you didn't um, save or increase the version of and you jump back you on to an older version, you will lose the last changes between the last saved version and the, the current state. Now, when you save a workflow, it, um, depending on the settings of your VRO client, it also allows you um, to automatically increase the version uh, for each time you um, save the workflow, but that does not allow you to add a comment into the comment field. So as a best practice, my recommendation is literally well to turn off that functionality and really uh, consciousness <laughs> increase the version when you made some reasonable changes and then also do a very good comment. Uh, what you made uh, change in the workflow. Now, when it comes to um, yeah, getting the workflows and the different versions on the version control, a very powerful mechanism in VRO is the so-called packaging functionality. So in VRO, with that uh, orange box symbol, you get a tab where you can define packages. In these packages, um, you can add multiple workflows with all their dependencies. So when you create a package, um, you can give it a certain name and then um, select a, a folder of workflows, for example, and the packaging mechanism automatically will add all the dependencies. So all the workflows that are in that folder, but also all the workflows and actions and configuration elements and resource elements that are being used by this workflow. So when you have um, the package and you export the package, we will see that in a minute, then um, you have everything you need to um, run this workflow within the package. As an example, um, to create a new package, um, you give it a, a certain name and then it allows you either to select individual workflows, but you can also uh, select the whole um, folder of workflows and then all the workflows in there and in all subfolders are being um, stored in the package. Also um, in the package, you can see there is the version field, so you get the list of workflows with their um, corresponding version in there. The uh, important to understand is that the package is just the definition, just a reference to its content. So you absolutely can have the same workflow being part of multiple packages, which is very useful, of course, for library workflows that are being used by a lot of different other workflows and in a lot of other um, packages. But it might be a bit um, confusing if you um, have that workflow then in multiple repositories in your source control. So when you do the packaging, we will come back to that later. Um, be smart about the granularity, how you build the packages. Now, um, in the current Orchestrator version, as of version 7, um, Orchestrator not only allows you to export the package as a single zipped package file, which would be the first menu, but it also allows you to expand the package to a folder. The first menu with um, export package gives you a single package file, a zipped file, which is yeah, a binary file. You could put that under source control, but 
putting binary files on the source control is um, yeah, not really the big value of a source control system. So um, with the second menu entry here, expand package to folder, that allows you to get the workflows in their XML definition to a folder. And you can see here in the screenshot that um, based on the, uh, in the folder, you then get a folder structure that represents the workflow folders and configuration elements and uh, resource elements and the whole content of the package as simple XML files. And this also allows you then, well, to do a regular git init, for example, on that uh, folder. And with that, you can get your um, individual workflows well under version control for Git. And then, of course, it's also quite easily possible to um, upload that to GitHub or any other um, GitLab or any other uh, Git repository. Now, the way back to um, get workflows back from that repository into your orchestrator is another um, icon or also available via the APIs to um, import the package from a folder. So uh, when you click that button, it allows you to select the folder where you have the um, expanded source code for um, the package, the same way back. And when you run that, then um, you get the typical version comparison between uh, on the right hand side what's already in your orchestrator server and what's in the package. And uh, the comparison works based on the uh, version of the individual elements. So that's why it is important to um, use the uh, version control of the uh, individual workflows, because then the import wizard allows you to compare what's already in there, what has to be imported, and what can be skipped. Important also is um, that small checkbox on the lower side to uh, if you want to import the values of configuration settings, because depending on your um, user scenario, that is something that you want or something that you absolutely do not want. So in, uh, we will talk about that in the, um, in the pitfall section. Yeah, so um, in general, the version control of Orchestrator is used mainly for um, two different scenarios. The first scenario is the typical deployment lifecycle. So you hopefully have different environments where you do your workflow development, that, that environments where you can um, easily mess up things without um, yeah, <laughs> breaking any important stuff. Then you have a, a separate, perhaps a separate test environment, integration environment, whatever it's called. And then you get your uh, production environment where the workflows then finally run in production. And using the um, packaging mechanism and the source control uh, is one tool that you have to facilitate that uh, deployment lifecycle. So you can uh, consider your Git repository, for example, as single source of truth for the state of the workflows, and then um, export or <laughs> export the, the folder from your Git repository into a file system, and then import them um, into the different orchestrator servers. To get some more um, information about the, um, the whole software development lifecycle, uh, check out the link here, the blog article on VCO team. It's quite old article, but the uh, concepts are still very valid. <laughs> now, some caveats and pitfalls when it comes to that Git integration with the um, with Orchestrator is that uh, typically source control systems like Git handle and identify things differently than Orchestrator. In Orchestrator, every element, a workflow, a action, configuration element, resource element, gets a unique ID and is identified by that unique ID. So that means um, you can have multiple workflows with the same name, even in the same folder. Not very useful, but technically that's possible. Um, it also means um, that when you move a workflow from one folder in your inventory, here on the left-hand side, to a different folder, it is still the same object because it keeps the same ID. However, when you expand that to a folder, the folder structure represents your folder structure and the workflow names, the file names are the workflow names in, uh, in Git. So that means um, the version control system identifies the things based on their names and the, the folder names. So be careful when you rename workflows, be careful when you move workflows around between different um, 
uh, folders and be careful when you copy workflows or have um, workflows or objects in general that have the same name so that um, yeah, the things don't get messed up. That's one very important uh, pitfall to, to think about. When you have a, a certain environment where you get uh, your whole workflow content um, in your file system, you can simply delete the whole SRC folder and then uh, do the expand to folder package again and then um, you get the current state even uh, again back into the, um, the file system. Another very important thing or pitfall caveat to think about is that um, the version control that we have in the VRO database, so the, these versions that I showed you before when you increase the version and give some comment, are not directly related to your Git commits. That is something that you as a developer typically have to take uh, care about. And it's also there is, um, out of the box, there is no uh, relationship between your version increasing and the, the different versions in, um, in Orchestrator and the different commits and the version that you have in your Git repository. You can do that, um, or you, you can, as a developer, manually take care of that. When, which means whenever you increase the version of a, a workflow element, you also do a, a corresponding git commit, and then you automatically get the, the same granularity. Or you can also do some more um, sophisticated stuff by, uh, for example, creating some scripts uh, as a pre-commit hook into git that allows them, since the, the workflows are in plain text XML um, structure, the git pre um, commit hooks, <laughs> the scripts can add and adjust the git comments into or inject that into the uh, VRO workflow version control. Another thing that you absolutely have to take care about, especially when developing in a team, be careful, um, there is no locking mechanism in Orchestrator when you have multiple um, developers working with the same workflow, the last one who clicks on save wins and might overwrite the settings and the changes of the other developers. So for that, it's a good idea to have uh, own orchestrator environment for each developer. Also, organically gives you into a better workflow design because then you um, keep your orchestrator itself as stateless as possible. Another thing is, um, even if it's file um, XML file based, there is no merge, so you cannot merge the workflows and make sure for the library workflows that you um, be smart about your package granularity. Some more information, reference here. Um, the configuration elements, for some elements you want the values in the package, for some you don't. Typically if you have um, stuff that is um, dependent or environment specific, you don't want to have that in the repository, um, otherwise um, it gets messed up when you uh, move it around. Some more links. Look at the VMTN communities. You can do some Maven automation around that. On your orchestrator, there is a, a Maven link that uh, allows you to automate the import, export, and the packaging mechanism. We have um, some uh, blocks around there for the and the management pack if you use VRO and VRA context. And there is a third-party solution and, of course, our sample exchange where you can download workflow packages. And feel free, of course, to share your packages as well. Thank you very much.